since we since we have a, a quorum now. So this is what? This is April 3rd, April 3rd meeting of the Board of Health. We have three members, Catherine Hilton, Garrett Simons, and Noreen Pease. And, oh, can we do the, the minutes from last time? Everybody happy with them? Yes, I'll, yeah. I'll approve. Okay. okay, everybody's in favor of approving? Okay. Yes. I don't think we need to do a, a formal a formal mm -hmm. vote. So so by way of reporting, I'll tell you that last Tuesday Arlene and I accompanied Claudia to 56 mm -hmm. Wendell Road and we um we went inside, which was pretty exciting, and uh talked with with the owner about his his um plans. And basically, he is planning with uh, a team of of local people that he is assembling to pretty much take the thing down itself. The whole building isn't coming down. I think it's the front wall is staying up, and there's a there's a chimney that's going to stay up, but the rest uh, the rest of it is coming down. And um, he, I asked him for a timeline, and he said, well after we get a thaw, but that's going to take a little time now, especially because, you know, the roof is open, so rain and snow and stuff are falling inside the house. There's ice on the steps. It's pretty, pretty scary, so he's waiting for it to, to warm up, basically. But it seems to be in progress. Um, uh, Claudia has um, sent a, 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 a sort of follow-up Mess letter to him um, setting out what we what we all agreed to and urging him to keep in touch with us. So that's where that is. Oh, here's somebody. It must be Wim. Hi, Wim. Is that you? Yeah, I'm here. I can't see any of you, but oh, it's Arlene. Yes. Hi. Okay. I was. I was just describing how um, how you and I went with Claudia to Greg Steves and uh, and inspected it. Uh huh. I don't know if there's anything uh, you wanted to say about that. No, I um, I don't have anything in particular. Well, actually, I guess I was um, maybe I felt a little surprised that the. Uh, was pretty casual about it. <laughs> you know, there was no um, sense from her that there would be an order coming or could be coming or anything like that. And she just said, you know, just keep us posted, essentially. Um, did she speak with you at all at, after that time? Well, no, she didn't. But she did send me for um, for passing on to, um, to Greg, mailing by... Um, um, regular mail and um, certified mail. And I will, it was a sort of a post, post um, inspection follow-up. Yeah. So, so the follow-up letter says, you know, summarizes she summarizes the plan. Um, within two months after the interior has begun begun to thaw of ice, you will commence to work commence work to begin removing the roof and rehabilitating the dwelling. In addition, okay. you will inquire about the proper permits to begin demolition of parts of the building if required and permits for reconstruction from the Bur Burkog building inspector. We will perform periodic checks on the progress of this project and encourage you to contact the Shutesbury Board of Health or its agent to provide us with updates. Right. Okay. Yeah, so that, that was gonna be my question where it's not a, com a total demolition and there's gonna be part of the structure maintained. Are they coordinating with a building inspector that's the plan okay so and that's through the for cog yeah okay great 
Yeah, presumably okay. he'll need a, I don't think he yet has a demolition permit to do this. Um, I asked Claudia if, if she thought that would be a problem, you know, because he wasn't hiring a demo company. And she said she didn't think so because you have a lot of leeway when it's your own property. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Any more to be said about that? Not from me, thanks. I don't think. Okay, well then, moving on. After I left there, I went up to Town Hall and I had a long chat with Sarah Fisk. And um, maybe you've seen uh, numerous um, town announces from me this afternoon announcing a uh, um, a Narcan training that's going to take place April 25th, not August 25th, sorry, um, uh, uh, at the Leverett Fire Station, not the library, but that one wasn't my fault. Um, so so um, she had this planned for Leverett and then, you know, invited Shootsbury to join. She wants to do a bunch of um trainings and health education events uh for both towns uh, she told me that in leverett she has to run everything by the board of health i said and i hope you will agree you don't have to do that in shootsbury if you're doing health education we're, we're behind it it's fine with us um if anybody doesn't feel that way let me know like now <laughs> Could, could I just interject? I'd like to hear about those things, but I don't think she needs to uh, await approval. Right. That's pretty much what I told her. Keep us, you know, keep us informed, but you don't, you don't have to ask our permission. Right. Okay. So she's got that planned. I gave her contact information for Andrew Lover because she'd like to have a TikTok, as she calls it. Um, and he's well-placed to do that. Um, and, uh, oh, and maybe you've seen around time, town these signs about let's simply walk and shoot Sperry and Leverett. I asked her about that because those signs are not very informative and she and I are going to work up some better signage and flyers for that. And the idea is for people to either using their own devices or getting some um pedometers which she has she has 36 to give out and she thinks she could probably get a similar number this year because she got those last year um mm -hmm. so the idea is that people would just walk either alone or together or inside or outside or you know whatever wherever and keep track of it and um and send her the information send her the steps or whatever it is and then she'll have data, which she seems to want to have. And it seems it seems worthy enough. So I said that probably we could spend some of our budget um, printing up flyers, and stuff, if that seems good to you guys. It's not uh, yeah. nodding. Yeah, I think we're going to have money left over in our budget. So we might as well use it for that. Um, so I think that's all I have to say about that. Um, do we have anything else to be reported on? Garrett, I don't think we had a collaborative meeting. Did did I miss one? I know we've rescheduled one coming up this month, but so did I miss the, one? So the collaborative has been having um, like a separate work group meeting to yes. talk about emergency dispensing sites. Right. And to talk about an approach wherein the communities in the collaborative that have dispensing sites uh, do a better job of collaborating around how we might operationalize them and under what circumstances. So we've been talking about, you know, like for Shootsbury and Leverett, where we're individual single community sites, are there specific types of infectious di disease events that we might want to retain the role and responsibility of setting up our own site? And, you know, the, 
that tends to be a fairly limited circumstance. Um, you know, so based on COVID, probably not. Hmm. Aerosolized anthrax, not likely. Uh, but if there was a, an event that occurred within the school population, so measles, as an example, or, um, you know, food handler, uh, hepatitis A uh, situation, that might be an example. Um, yeah. But larger, or, or you know, if, if there was uh, uh, COVID vaccines made available for older adults or a pandemic flu vaccine made available for older adults, maybe we would want to sponsor a clinic here. Um, so we've been trying to talk through what are the different scenarios and and how how we might collaborate and where the locations could be for, for different scenarios. It sounds like that in the event, it would be pretty much ad hoc that we'd have to have to make the decisions based on a number of factors um, that it sounds like leaving the options open for different kinds of collaborations. Yeah, or... you know, I think basically where we've landed is that it doesn't make a lot of sense to just say, you know, these sites that we've planned for over a number of years that we're just going to scrap them. You know, we, yeah. we want to be able to use them if the circumstance is appropriate for it, um, but that it's more likely that we're going to face a scenario where it makes better sense to collaborate. I agree. Yeah. So that's, that's the main um, conversation that's been happen happening at the collaborative. And then, uh, on Monday, MAFCO met, the uh, steering committee for MAFCO met, uh, because on last Friday, um, DPH uh, announced their, for the next CDC public health emergency preparedness grant for the next five years, uh, DPH is preparing their application for that, that funding, uh, those funds go from DPH out to the public health coalitions, including MAFCO. And so on Friday, DPH presented their uh, their strategy for the application and what the funding levels would be. And as part of that application process, they have to seek concurrence from local public health. And so at the Monday meeting of the MAFCO steering committee, um, I, I talked talk through that application, uh, the strategy that DPH has pr proposed and the funding levels, uh, which are pretty much level funded. Um, and the steering committee voted to concur with their approach um, as, as part of their application. Very good. Uh -huh. That reminds me of a thing I meant to bring up earlier. When so when I sent out this this notice of the Narcan training, um, we got a response back from a townsperson saying, "I sincerely hope that our taxpayer dollars aren't being used to provide Narcan." A couple of <gasps> information points. Now it well, wasn't a, it wasn't a question, so I don't have any uh, any intention of answering it unless the person rephrases it as a question, which was paying for this. Right. Um, but it's a it's an interesting question. Um, where does all this Narcan come from? Is it from is it coming from DPH or from some other state agency? Garrett, do you know? So my guess would be it could be coming from. From a state agency like DPH, mm -hmm. uh, it may also be coming from other local sources, um, including you know uh, EMS providers, fire and EMS. Um, mm. It's not uncommon for there to be uh, broad training on how to administer Narcan mm -hmm. to both professionals and lay people. Um, so, 
um, you know, the, the idea is to save lives and, um, if we can save lives using taxpayer funds by training people on how to do it, um, I'm all for it. Yeah. I totally, I totally agree with you. I think my only, Garrett? Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead, Arlene. Go ahead. I'm wondering if it's possibly coming from the opioid settlement funds. Probably not from this, this current uh, settlement funds because okay. they're, they're just, starting to be distributed, but, um, oh, okay. um, you know, other settlements there, there might've been previous settlements that provided access to, okay. uh, funding for, um, okay. for both the training and, and the product. Um, yeah. you know, my, my assumption is that there will be a lot that a lot of the settlement funds will be used to provide additional training. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think but it's there also are a lot of people. Go ahead. I keep I keep interrupting you, Kat. I'm sorry. There are a lot of um, strong negative feelings out there um, in the general population about a lot of harm reduction strategies having to do with substance use, like needle exchange programs and uh, hotlines, and um, you know safe injection centers and the like boy that gets a lot of people going and um you know if they have a sense that their tax dollars um are being used to to fund these programs um so it's what you're hearing there from that one town resident is kind of a tip of the iceberg about what's out there about harm reduction strategies. I think. Well, I'm not planning to engage with that person. Yeah. Thought that yeah. Having the answer to that, I mean, in one sense, obviously, of course it comes from tax dollars somewhere. It doesn't come from our town yeah. budget. Right. But yeah. um, I, I yeah. think it's possible that the collaborative could potentially have been purchasing Narcan this year using some of its funding. Yeah. I'll Which ask Sarah if she sense. knows. Yeah. Just, you know, just as a point of information, I don't I don't want to start debating harm yeah. reduction with citizens. If they don't want to take the training, they don't have right. to take it, but um I don't have to, you know, waste my time defending it. Right. <laughs> right. Just to mention, I think Garrett um, Garrett talked about the fact that the collaborative has been um, meeting to discuss, um, you know, planning for emergency preparedness. Uh, but I just uh, I think the regular meeting of the collaborative is coming up also, and that has been changed this month. Uh, Garrett, I'm not sure you were on that email. Um, it's it's going to be the 18th now at 8:30 in the morning. Yeah, I saw that. Okay, good. So that would be just to conduct our regular business of the collaborative. Oh, and there's new, there's a new, um, maybe it was in the paper. There's a new health director in Greenfield. In Greenfield. Oh, good. Yeah. Have you met this person, Garrett, in your? Not, no. not yet. My, and, and I actually don't know the name even. But I, I, I don't, I don't either, yeah. That, yeah, my understanding is that they've, they've been in public health for previously for a while, so. Good. Good. It'll be interesting to see how this person interacts with the collaborative. Mm. There has been a person in the like a special assistant to the uh, to the mayor has been attending our meetings. Mm -hmm. So there has been there has been interest. So that's good. Excellent. Okay. What else have we got? Anything? Not from me. Yeah, I was thinking I had one other thing I just wanted to tell you about. Maybe that was it. Well, I can't think of anything else.
So Arlene, yeah. you're in Nashville, did you say, or you're in Hot Springs? Oh, we we were there last night and this morning, and we are now just outside of Hot Springs National Park in Arkansas. And I um, can, but, yeah. But we were in Nashville, and not long enough to to um, see much of it. But we did go to the Johnny Cash Museum <laughs> this morning, <laughs> which was just a great museum. It was yeah. wonderful. And um, I learned about what a really fine person Johnny Cash was. Mm -hmm. Well, that's cool. Um, so that was good. And then we walked down part of the main dragon, the number of honky tonks and boot emporia <laughs> emporia <laughs> was <laughs> astonishing but we resisted the whole buy one pair of boots get two pairs free well then how, how um, are you dancing we, if you don't have any boots, <laughs> <Our cowboy boots. laughs> we resisted yeah. well the food's pretty good so we are, too yeah uh we at the urging of a friend of ours who was in touch with us and knew where we were traveling, we stopped at a, a Mexican restaurant outside of Nashville. So I don't know, that doesn't seem to fit. Like, the, what? That's not Nashville food, that's Mexican food. But anyway, <laughs> right. we weren't there long enough to experience more. But Hey, I remembered the other but, thing I wanted to, do, to mention. We got... Oh, good. Uh, mail from somebody from the MWRA, the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority that, that administers Quabbin water. And they are having a sort of exploratory committee to talk about possibly making water available to the watershed communities that are not included um, in, oh, the, in the, you know, the Eastern part of the state where they, the, the MDC, I guess. So, um, so they they haven't been very responsive, but we're we're assembling some documents that they've asked for about water quality and public water supplies and and so on. So, so something's something's moving there. Uh, wow! But who knows? I think there must have been some perhaps some legislative pressure on MWRA because they've been pretty resistant to this before, as far as I know. Yeah, I think I saw something recently that uh, Senator Comerford was um, pushing them on it. Uh -huh. Well, they seem a little bit reluctant, but um, but they are they are taking action and asking for documents and trying to set up a meeting. So yeah. I'll let um, you know what I hear. That would, seems like to me, that would be an enormous undertaking, like with, there's no infrastructure for providing water to us. Right, right, it but, seems, wow. yeah, it seems pretty, uh, pretty gruesome. I wonder- like a long, maybe it's a very long range plan, I would imagine. But, possibly, yeah. or, you know, possibly another, another way of, of approaching it is that they might reimburse the towns to some extent because you know we've got all this watershed land that's not getting it's not bringing in any tax revenue we get payments in lieu of taxes but i think that's a fraction of what we might get if if um mm. some of that property were developable and it may <laughs> be that after we talk around and around about about actually bringing in water, they'll see that it would be a lot cheaper just to um, just to reimburse us for some of the lost costs that we or the lost revenue okay. we're experiencing. I think what I, I was mean, really the the thought of sending a mile long pipe up from from two o two to the top of the hill. Oh my God, seriously, yeah, I know. I think what I was seeing was that it was some of the, the towns in the southern portion of the reservoir that were interested in connecting into the system and that they maybe have more developed uh, local water systems that aren't just aren't just uh, private wells. 
Right. The um, the request for for documents was divided into two parts, one for towns that don't have water infrastructure and one for towns that do. So obviously there's two oh. two different things going on here. Huh. Um, Kat, Very another, interesting. Uh, another water question. Did Lake Wyola uh, ever get resolved? Who can do the testing for the beaches this summer? Or do we know yet who is doing any kind of testing for any beach testing or any water testing? We don't know. Bob Blanchett reached out to me and told me that the the company that was um, employed last year by the association and by the state park to take the samples and deliver them to some lab, that that, that company is closing up. Um, so I didn't really have any other, anything to offer him except to get in touch with um, the park superintendent and find out who they are going to use if they've found any. I also suggested or pointed out that for years um, the samples were taken locally and nobody didn't come out and do it. Bill used to go out frequently and take samples and I think he had a little team of other people that would go out and take the samples and make sure that they were done. And I can remember Frank Bunton taking the samples at the state park. Right, This outsourcing, that part of it is comparatively new. And uh, they may have to they may have to go back to doing it that way because um, it seems to be hard to get anybody to come out and do it. Yeah. So that's all I know. Just a quick question, Garrett. Was that the first meeting that you ran on Monday at MAFCO? Uh, Michael stole. I mean, we, yeah, yeah, we sort of trade off on different things, yeah. but I, I led the discussion on the nice. on the uh, CDC funding. So. Yeah, good. Good to have Shootsbury taking a leadership role. Yeah, just because we haven't for years, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Back to Bill. Right, 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 right. right. I, didn't, I didn't there. mean to suggest that we hadn't been out front already. No, 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 I know, I know. I'm just saying, yeah, it's, Tewsbury's done its part, let's, for sure. For sure. No kidding. Thanks to Bill and you, Noreen and Garrett. Yeah. So if we're done, we might as well adjourn. Sounds good. I so move. Okay. All in favor? Second. Yes. 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 Have, yes. have a wonderful trip, Arlene. How long have you trip. gone? Right. Arlene, Thank you. I'm glad I'm... you're not here because it's sleeting like crazy. Yeah, I I've been we've been following because right now we have a fair